Welcome back to American Horror Story Discussions and Predictions. In this series, we discuss key points in each episode, and I also make some predictions of my own. In this episode, we are discussing American Horror Story, New York City, Episodes 7 and 8. Let's go. And I'm going to start us out on Episode 7. So Episode 7 starts off with Whiteley inside of his compound working on this Frankenstein body he has been working on in previous episodes. Patrick and Gino are outside the compound, stalking Whiteley about to enter it. If you can remember, Gino and Henry were about to go kidnap or try to kill Whiteley inside of that bar, but Whiteley ended up drugging Henry and taking him to this compound that Gino followed him to. Patrick and Gino end up inside of this compound, and as they are walking it through here, they find Henry alive. And then once they find Henry alive, they see this body being lowered down, which is the Frankenstein body that Whiteley has been working on. This is to distract them as Whiteley then knocks both Patrick and Gino in the head and they are knocked out. They then wake up on tables. Both of them are tied to tables. I wanted to note that Henry and Gino are together and then Patrick is separated. So Patrick wakes up separately and Whiteley is there talking to him. Whiteley said that he wanted to get Patrick alone so they could talk, that he's a big fan of Patrick's, and that he wanted the Frankenstein body to have Patrick's heart since he is so heroic. Now this makes me think that maybe, just maybe, Patrick has a dark side and is him himself a serial killer, as Whiteley is a big fan. Uh, This is making me think that because you can think back to the hotel series where the main detective ends up being the killer at the end. Now, I could be wrong about this, but I do think that Patrick is evil in some sort of way, and we will continue to see this. And then in the next scene, it shows Henry and Gino again. Henry is pulling really hard at his handcuffs and manages to get one hand free. As he is scrummaging around to figure out another way to get the other hand free, He ends up finding a saw and uh, does the most unlikely thing with it, or the most likely thing if you are a true horror story fan. (laughs) He ends up getting a saw and cutting his hand off pretty gruesomely. And then in the next scene, Whiteley is claiming to Patrick that he is doing this for the greater good and to claim and prove that the cops do not care about their kind. He also states that he's going to bring life to this body. So will we see what that means? Find out soon. And then Gino and Henry save Patrick at the very last second from getting killed as they come in wielding chainsaws and butcher knives pretty hilariously. It's kind of funny watching these guys swing these weapons around and act serious, but they do save Patrick. Whiteley then confesses that he does like killing sometimes, and that's the part of him that needs to be put away. Patrick says that all of you needs to be put away, pulls out his gun, and shoots Whiteley in the head. Right there, Whiteley is dead. But before he pulls the trigger, he sees all of these spirit-like figures. And I'm thinking these are people that Whiteley has killed in the past, Maybe they're telling him not to kill Whiteley because maybe he's actually doing something twisted or they he Whiteley has them possessed or something like that. Or they're encouraging Patrick to shoot him in the head. But either way, we see these ghostly figures and I just like how they did that scene. It's pretty cool. Then we see Patrick letting Adam trying to identify any piece of his friend that's on this Frankenstein body. And honestly, when you look at the body, it's pretty impossible to tell of any body part other than the head. So, of course, he cannot identify him. But to me, this was a little strange. I had to note that I didn't think it was normal that Patrick was bringing him in there to see that. I almost think that he wanted to scare Adam 
And this also kind of hints back towards Patrick's possible dark side. And then we see Dr. Hannah Wells talking with Adam about their blood work and how they have low T cells. And then she reveals that Sully, Adam's friend that was killed in the previous episodes, was her first patient and that these killings could possibly be tied to this blood disease. And then in the next scene, we see Dr. Hannah Wells, Fran, and all of the girls that have been with Fran in the previous episodes talking about this disease again. They are saying that it looks like chemical warfare. Could this be another hint leading to what this disease is? Or is this disease simply AIDS, as many people have predicted? And then we see Adam discussing with Gino about other possible killers still lurking around New York City. Gino calls him crazy and invites him to Fire Island to relax with him and Patrick. And then in the next scene, we see Patrick and he sees his ex-wife for just a moment as he is walking. And why is he seeing his ex-wife? Could it be because he is guilty that he possibly had a reason for her death? Or could it be that she is possibly demonic or something like that? So we'll definitely have to look forward to this and see what happens with that as well. In the next scene, we then see Dr. Hannah Wells calling Adam saying that she cannot come to the Fire Island retreat, unfortunately. And it also shows her throwing up as well. And this could be because she's pregnant, but it's most likely because of the disease. It then shows Hannah calling her mom in which she tells her mom that she thinks she has the disease. So she has spilled the beans. And now we know for sure that Dr. Hannah Wells is most likely sick with this disease, or at least she believes she is. And then of course, right after she hangs up with her mom, the camera pans and shows Big Daddy outside of her window. So this is more evidence that this disease possibly is tied to Big Daddy and Big Daddy stalks these people that possibly have this disease. And then my favorite and the most craziest part of this episode, it shows Gino writing an article about the Mai Tai killer, but the background video and images show the Frankenstein body that the Mai Tai killer Mr. Whiteley has been working on and the Frankenstein body is now alive and it actually has multiple kills now. It seems to be running around the city terrorizing people. So now the Frankenstein body has come to life. So I'm excited to see where that goes. And that's it for episode seven. So now let's discuss episode eight. Episode eight starts off with everybody on the boat headed to Fire Island. It's focusing on Theo as Theo is throwing up. They discuss the fact that Theo potentially may have the disease going around. And then we see Gino and Patrick hanging out on the beach where Gino reveals to Patrick that he has another sore and he thinks he has something evil inside of him that is growing. Patrick turns this into an argument which leads me to believe that he may possibly know what it is. It could be something demonic going on with Big Daddy or possibly the psychic house or just possibly something he knows about uh, and is why he starts this argument. Then we see Patrick walking alone headed back towards the vacation house that they have at Fire Island. And then when in the house, Patrick has an awkward argument with Adam and Theo. And during this argument, I noted that they had evil music because Patrick's demeanor was changing and it's kind of hinting towards Patrick being evil. And then Theo and Adam leave and Patrick ends up seeing his ex-wife again. And then this time she ends up looking like a dead body or something like some sort of zombie or something like that. And she goes to kiss him. And could this be a reference, if you can remember the dark angel telling Gino that do you want me to kiss it and go away? Or is this just separate? And could the ex-wife either be demonic, possessed, or is she haunting Patrick because he had something to do with her death? And then in the next scene, we see Gino walking by himself, kind of following a couple in front of him. And then they beeline and go into the woods and Gino starts to follow them 
but then does not. But, and then you see Big Daddy where he was about to go into the woods. I wanted to note that it was a little weird that Gino was following this couple, although he could have, I guess, tried to join or just wanted to watch. But was he fighting an evil urge as he was going to go into the woods and possibly do something evil? I could be going out on a stretch there, just kind of wanted to make a prediction. But it does show Big Daddy watching. So did he know that he possibly was going to be stalking this couple? Or is Big Daddy stalking Gino as we have seen he has sores and probably has the disease as well? And then we see Gino walking on the beach. And then Henry approaches him and they speak for a little bit. And Henry makes it real awkward by saying that he's in love with Gino and he has spared his life from them. Them we are assuming as the mob as we saw that Henry was a possible hitman for the mob in previous episodes. But he then says to Gino, if I can't have you, no one can. Gino stops him right before he finishes, but you can tell what he's going to say. So this is kind of making Henry seem a little weird as well. Like he may end up going on a murderous spree since he cannot have Gino. And then in the next scene, it shows a bunch of people walking around and Big Daddy himself is in the background. So could Big Daddy be very close to going on a murderous spree there at Fire Island? Or is he just in the process of stalking other victims? And then we see Theo and Adam eating in a restaurant and Theo is not looking so well. He's not doing so hot at all. Safe to say he is looking pretty bad. <laughs> His eyes are all black and he just looks like he's very sick. Um, as they are eating, he sees Sam in the background and then mentions to Adam that maybe they should just go home. And then we see Sam and Henry talking at the bar. Henry struggles to get a drink as Sam walks up, snaps his fingers, and it seems instantly has a drink. And then they start discussing about Henry's love issues and how he's lonely and then all of that good stuff. And then Sam says to meet him at the meat rack at nine and he will have the solution to his problems. Sam then approaches Theo and attempts to give him a truce, which he accepts. They end up taking a truce shots, and it appears that they have tried to make somewhat of a bad breakup a little bit better, but it, it's still clear that they're not friends, but Sam was trying to make a truce, and then obviously it seemed like Sam was just trying to get back with Theo. Then the next scene shows Fran and her girls talking about how no one has seen Dr. Hannah Wells in days. And then we can see Big Daddy in the background. So again, as they are talking about the disease, we can see Big Daddy is showing up again. And as we know, everyone who is either gay or lesbian seems to be getting this disease. So one could hint that one of them or all of them possibly has the disease as well. So they see Big Daddy in the background and uh, they end up looking away and he's not there anymore, but ends up being on the other side of the house, extremely close and very close. And one of the girls comes out of the house, pulls a knife on Big Daddy as they stare at each other for a few seconds. Big Daddy walks away. So this could have been a close encounter where they could have been this close to getting killed without really knowing it. Then in the next scene, we see Gino dancing around listening to classical music, cutting up limes and making a drink when the music suddenly stops. And then out of nowhere, Big Daddy tackles Gino and begins wrestling and fighting with him. We then see Adam intervene and try to help as well. But Big Daddy seems to be getting the best of them during this scuffle. Then we see Patrick show up with a gun. He draws his gun and shoots Big Daddy in the back of the head and he drops to the floor. Moments later, it shows them going to unmask Big Daddy and he is no longer there. Now I wanted to point, this could have been Patrick and Big Daddy kind of making a scene, making it seem like Patrick is not connected with Big Daddy. He could have shot a blank at Big Daddy and he could have just hit the ground as Patrick could be Big Daddy's leader or commander or something like that. That's just a prediction. 
it's not actually what happens, but I just wanted to make a note of that to viewers so they could make that note as well. It could also point to Big Daddy being sort of supernatural as he is shot and then just sort of disappears. Could he have gotten up and ran away or did he disappear as he could be spiritual? So we'll have to find out and see. In the next scene, we see Fran giving more tarot readings and every card she is pulling seems to be the death card once again, which we know this doesn't really mean literal death. It could mean many things, but it, she keeps drawing the death card and in, and in this instance, it could mean literal death. We then see Sam and Henry walking around the meat rack and they discuss Henry's issues again, and Sam tells him that all the men here are here to be defiled and have pleasure. That gets them off to be defiled and abused and all of that. It's gonna, that's what they're here for is what he makes Henry believe. And then we see that Sam has Theo tied up here in this meat rack, and then it shows a cut scene where Theo actually was drugged by Sam during the truce shot that was happening earlier. So now Theo is tied up and drugged, and uh, Sam tells Henry not to worry that this is what Theo is there for. Then Henry starts taking off his clothes and rubbing Theo and starts talking and whispering to him, and all of a sudden Big Daddy appears again in the background. Henry sees Big Daddy and gathers his clothes very quickly and leaves the scene. Meanwhile, while all of this is happening, it also shows a scene where Fran is still continuously pulling death cards. And then in the final scene of episode 8, we see that as Big Daddy is doing this, all of a sudden a bunch of men come out of the woods with antlers on their heads and they come to pretty much save Theo it appears but it could be also Theo dying and them coming to welcome him as Theo mentions that he knows them that he knows all of them so this is leading us to believe that they are most likely also gay people who have been killed by these murderers but they are all there kind of in a ghostly figure with deer antlers on their head and they kind of lift up Theo and carry him off. So I kind of wanted to just note that that is the end of episode eight, but I wanted to give you one more prediction before we left. So the main theory and prediction right there is that Theo is dead, but I have another theory I wanted to push out there. If you remember in previous episodes, Theo pulled a devil card, which we have not seen pulled again. I could be wrong, but he got a devil card pulled. So could he be a devil spawn or probably devilish or demonic? And could these be the evil spirits coming to actually save him from actually dying? So could Theo possibly have been on the brink of death and these sort of death angels come and save him to preserve him? Or could he have simply just passed away and been carried away by the spirits of the Mai Tai killer and all of the other killers that have been killing the gay community? In American Horror Story, New York City. And that wraps it up, guys. American Horror Story, New York City discussions and predictions for episode 7 and 8. Let me know in the comments of this video what your predictions are and what you think overall of this series. I'm, I'm just interested to know, as I actually like it, I feel like Horror Story is back. I'm not going to say it's the best one, but it's by far better than the double feature one we had last year. I'm going to say this could be top six or seven. There's a ton of horror story seasons that I do love, but I believe horror story is back. Let me know in the comments if you agree.